Welcome to Personal Mastery Training. I'm your host, Alvin Brown, former world-class athlete turned entrepreneur and consultant. Join us as we learn from guests who have conquered their inner battles and share their journeys to success. Get ready for inspirational masterclasses and thought-provoking strategy sessions to fuel your path to personal mastery. Let's dive in. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mastery Alliance, where we're going to feed you, as usual, some soul food that would, you know, nourish your soul and uh, be good for your body and mind and spirit. All right. So today... The four of us, we one of us choose to bring along the main meal. And as usual, we will add the flavors and the spice and make everything nice. So today we're gonna lean on Brandon. Brandon <laughs> brought Brandon brought the raw material and we're gonna cook it up over the next sixty to ninety minutes. So let's see what we got. Brandon, what did you bring? What surprise did you bring? Yeah, so the the dish that has been marinating, if you will, kind of like some good steak sometimes, mm. the meat, uh, boundaries, boundaries and expectations. I'm, I'm, it keeps coming up in my life. It keeps coming up personally and professionally. And just the, the importance of we as individuals, as humans, we need to be realistic about our own personal boundaries for ourselves, boundaries for others as well as expectations. And I, and I feel like the two kind of go hand in hand because our expectations can impact our boundaries, right? And if they're way out of, out of line or unrealistic, our boundaries may not, even, may not even exist. They may be so far away you can't even see that boundary or that wall, that line, if you will. So I wanted to throw that out there, get some perspective, some uh, you three gentlemen, brothers here, and see what we come up with. So Brandon, I, I want to ask a question real quick. Give me a little bit more uh, meat with this, a uh, little bit more of the ingredients, because you said something triggered this. You did a, you were, in, you were asked to go to a speaking event, and it was already primed. But coming from the speaking event, with these, and 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 speak to the group you were talking to. Yeah, well, as I mentioned a minute, a moment ago, you know, personal and professionally and personally the boundaries, I've been dealing with some things on a personal level with family and uh, my son specifically and daughter regarding boundaries as a father to them. And they're both adults. Uh, but then also recently, I just came from uh, Houston, Texas, the National Association of Women in Construction, uh, also known as NAWIC, had their national annual convention. Uh, they're 5,000 strong across the country, and there was probably 600 individuals, ladies that showed up, and uh, I was definitely the minority, uh, but was honored to be there. And, and during the discussions that I, I helped uh, lead in a workshop focused on mental health, the boundaries kept coming up and expectations kept coming up and, and being realistic about, about those boundaries for ourselves not taking on too much, overextending ourselves. But then also making sure our boundaries are set up in a place that's going to record, that's going to cause us to grow too, right? You don't want your boundary right here where I can't go any further, right? I'm in a box. And you know, that it needs to be out there a little bit so you can you can like I said, grow for grow and, and move forward and, and evolve. So mm -hmm. gotcha. All right, fellas, who, who's got the first ingredient to add to this? All right. I think uh, this is this is, a, this is another great topic to, to dive into. And the first thing that came to mind for me is when you said not setting your boundaries too close, right? You want to you wanna set your boundaries in a way that allows you to grow personally. And I love that because I think that as human beings, we need to allow people to challenge us at times, right? Challenge our beliefs, challenge our way of thinking at times. Because if, if our beliefs are never challenged and our way of thinking is never challenged, then will it ever change? And we need to continue to evolve as human beings. I mean, all of us think 
much differently than we were when we were children. Then we think differently when we we're adolescents, teenagers, then young adults, we think differently. Then we move into uh, middle age, we think differently because a lot of beliefs or thought patterns that we had when we were younger were challenged and we saw that, hey, there's a better way or, or man, I was incorrect there or, um, man, I had I never even considered that or this. So I think that's one of the real important keys is allowing people to challenge your thoughts, your beliefs without it interfering with your relationship, right? Um, so that we're friends and we they can challenge a belief that I have, for instance. And then even if at the end of the day, even if I still don't agree, the friendship is still maintained because I've set a boundary in a way that they know it's okay to come in and challenge my beliefs. And I and and personally, I I like it because I want to. At the end of the day, it's not about being right; it's about what's right. Okay, so I I want to I want to always do what's right. I always want to have the right mindset. And if there's a better point of view or a different point of view that will enhance my thinking, therefore will enhance my ability to interact and build relationships with others. And enhance the experience they have with me and how they experience me if I have a more expanded evolved point of view so I think that's so important that people feel okay empowered to challenge our thinking at times with that I'll pass the mic mm. and this subject is uh, is something and, and there's so many layers uh, to it because first of all, what what are boundaries? So that's that's something I find is is yeah. important <laughs> to start off with. And uh, the main definition simply says it's where something ends and where something else begins. Okay, whether it's in a relationship, whatever you're doing, right? So it starts with that. Um, I love what you guys said, both of you, Brandon, Charlie, uh, because it's so it's so true. You know, your boundaries can't keep you locked in uh, too much. You have to be the one that challenges them so you can give yourself an opportunity to stretch. But it's important to also have people who can test them one way or another. Um, I find maybe an important thing to look at is simply what are our boundaries founded on, you know, are our boundaries founded on strong principles? Are there parts of our boundaries that should not be moved? You know, that's, that's true. Also, some of them should not be moved. Some of them can be challenged. It's just having the clarity to know which is which when it comes to values, when it comes to foundational uh, principles, you know, that you truly believe in, they should be looked at uh, in enough humility and become strong enough that they are solid, right? But you should also be malleable enough to give yourself the opportunity to change if you were wrong. You know, it happened uh, all throughout history where People believe things wholeheartedly their whole lives, and you know what? They were wrong. And some of them never allow themselves to change. Some of them allow themselves to change, you know? So that's really the dance in, in, in boundaries, okay? In boundaries where, yeah, definitely, man. It, it can be solid, and it should be solid, right? But it needs to be able to be challenged and stretched from within, and also from the outside, right? And maybe, uh, I don't know if I'm right when it comes to this. Again, it's just opinion as I'm listening to the, um, to the conversation. I'm asking ourselves, are boundaries for us and expectations for others? You know, how do we approach this uh, usually? You know, because as we go into this life, as we 
try to grow. Um, it's important to dare greatly, but it's also important to um, protect your heart, protect your time. If you're going to give yourself the opportunity uh, to grow, you know, to protect the input that also comes into your mind, make sure it's the right things, you know, so it kind of starts with you figuring out, okay, what, what should go in and what should it get? And from there, expectations, um, we talked about it a few weeks back, guys, how expectations really is uh, the easiest way to be disappointed sometimes, right? We need to have expectations for sure, but at the same time, it's a tricky thing also. Is it more for others? I'm not sure. I'm throwing this question uh, out there to see what you guys think. All right, all right. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm getting a lot of notes here. Um, so let's start with Ray, Charlie, and Brandon touched on so many things. I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. So let's start with boundaries. Um, and expectations. Who set those boundaries and expectations in your, because we're so driven. No wonder we're on this quest to find ourselves a lot in life, because who are we? I mean, you know, and, and you, we are affected. We come out of the womb completely open to any suggestion, open to any beliefs and cultural influences and Oh, we a lot of us run around in NLP, neurolinguistic programming. We talk about this idea that there are three things we do with every experience, which is why we're so messed up. We delete a lot of information because there's a ton coming in. We distort it to make it make sense to us because I'm not, I wasn't born in the U.S., uh, so I have a different perspective. So I'll distort your information to make it make sense to me because I grew up in a different area. I wasn't born in Africa. Uh, so, it's, you know, I'll distort it to the Jamaican, Canadian, whatever it is, values that I have. It means something else. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll I'll delete, distort, and generalize. I'll generalize things to summarize it, give you the Coles notes of my life. And the problem is when I give the Coles notes, I delete it and generalize. And typically it's... It's not always the most empowering summarization. So what is our what is our boundaries? Who who set them? Are they yours? Did you go on a journey and discover what yours are? Are they we don't do that here? You know, that's not how we do. I'm Italian, I'm Canadian, I'm American, I'm wherever. I'm from uptown, downtown, whatever it is. What are your boundaries? Who set them? Humans are complex. So then I go to where uh, Ray, Ray, I think, I thought he was going to go there and steal my thunder. But, uh, you know, how many of us have been in martial arts or uh, have been in practice of any kind, you know, um, role playing, all these things? Let's go to martial arts real quick. You know, in martial arts, we will go through hypothetical situations go ahead grab my collar and then i'm gonna grab this and i'm gonna do this as if life is that way right as if life is they're gonna grab that left collar and you're gonna grab it, the wrist and they're gonna wait for you to turn and no it's not like that or they put the gun up and you see that guy da, 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 he does all these things when well real life it doesn't happen like that so when we have these boundaries and expectations set in place someone's gonna come along and challenge it they're going to do something different than you expected. They're going to test your, how'd you do? How's that grab my wrist thing? And did, can you do it under pressure and all of these kind of things, right? So they're going to test you. So when you set these, all these things are tests. When, you're, when your boundaries are set in place, how strong is it? How strong is your borders? Someone's going to test it. And it's good. It's good for them to test it, I think. Because do you really believe what you're saying? And this is where values come in, the idea of values. What are your values? This is something that I work on with my clients all the time. You know, values, if you think about values in, in practical, 
when you ask somebody, I just worked with a client this last week and she was talking about values. And I said, you know, values, sometimes when we get a list of values, some people, when you ask them what their values are, they don't really know. They never thought about it. A large percentage of people never can't list their top five values. They cannot. They've never thought about it. What are your top five values? Nope. Can't think about it. They'll throw things like, I don't know. Um, ooh, let me think. Creativity, integrity, all these beautiful words. But then you go, you know, here's how you figure out your top five values. You're doing them right now. You're living them. They're natural. You don't have to think about them. You're actually living them. So give it some thought. And values are the things where you draw your line in the sand and you will die for these things. That's values. Whether it be truth, whether it be integrity, whatever it is, you will die. You'll notice that you make irrational and rational decisions based on those values. So my top five, I'll say, and it shows up. Check my life. You'll see it. Family. Yes. I don't put family in there, but I'm. if you check my calendar, there's nothing in there about family. Respect. That's number one for me. I respect myself and I respect you. And I'll always give respect. And I'll always do irrational things when I don't get respect. And I have to monitor it because I'm much respect. Am I leaning on that? Fitness. It shows up in my values every day. I move every day. Freedom. I have to be free. I'd be a lousy slave. And fun and change, you know. So when you look at my life, though, I can see all of this on here and in front of you and all the listeners. And then you go, you check my life and you go, huh, that's not in alignment. But come check me. It's in alignment. So, but every so often I have to be tested. You know, I'll be offered, I'll be offered an opportunity. Just recently, I was, I was supposed to be somewhere on a site business social trip and something happened at the last minute. I had to, I totally dropped it in an instant and, and attended to the family issue. It shows up. I don't choose one over the other. So you're going to be tested for your boundaries. So let these people come in. Let your boundaries get nudged. It'll help build character. Just that, just as I talked about the practice, the kata, doing the fake kata and grab my shirt. Test me. That's the only, it's only in game. Anybody who's done any event, athletics or not, you notice that you get better during the game, not the practice. You get better during the actual physical thing. So let, let it be tested. Let's see what you got. Let's see how strong your boundaries are. Let's see if they're, if they are true and your, your integrity is true then. Um, know thyself. That's the quest here. Personal mastery. Know thyself. Um, do I have boundaries? Well, if I didn't know, I'm going to get it figured out. Will you let go of the high position? Let's say you're in a, a job, well paid, or you're going for a contract, a sales, something like that. And that person goes over your line. Will you walk away or will you say, mm, I'll let them slip past my boundaries just because I need the money or I need the sales or I need, that's when you get tested. And sometimes you never know, walking away can help reinforce your position actually with that person because they go, respect, respect. Okay. All right. You know what? That tells me a little bit about your character because sometimes some people in unconditionally or unconsciously and consciously can be checking you, checking you for holes and see if you're going to pass, give you the, the, the poke test. Let me poke you, see if you're going to, can, you know, give in. And that's part of my, see if you're the right person for me. So, and then I wrote here, who said, be, be like water. Bruce Lee said that. So how rigid is your boundary? Again, if it ties to your values, stay there. But if those boundaries are set by someone else, like we don't do this here, check that one. The one that you say, that's not how we do. My culture, my whatever, my group, friend group, we don't do that here. Be careful, be careful of the we don't do that here. But that might be linked to some boundaries that you didn't set or maybe it doesn't align with you, but we don't do that here. So, you know, it's an interesting conversation about boundaries and it's all goes back to know thyself.
which is a quest for personal mastery. <clears throat> you know, personal mastery is this idea of mastering self. The game, the game is not about outside at all. No game we play, life, sports, and those who can attest to that, it's never about outside. The game is to win the internal game. And then you win everything. Everything cleans up after that. So with that, I'll uh, pass the pass the meal over for some more spice. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I want to touch on something that, Al, you just mentioned as well. I think Charlie even touched, brushed against it. The word freedom, I what I tried to, the stories I heard this week and stuff that I'm dealing with personally as well, I, I need to hear just as much as I'm saying it, right? I find that to be fascinating sometimes when I, when I share with others when they ask the question. It's like, man, I, I needed to hear that. Maybe That's 100. That's Maybe 100. even more. It's 100. Others. Yeah. And it's that freedom of the, well, I think sometimes there's this negative outlook on boundaries or even expectations like we're holding ourselves back or we're holding other people at bay. Um, and and I, I think we miss the positive, the, the, the benefit, the joy, the positivity of it. Like Dr. Charlie mentioned the other day, you know, and I love this phrase and I shared it multiple times is the good and goodbye. Right. There's good in that. And I love that so much, but, I think the same can be said about having good, healthy boundaries, right? Because it does protect us to a certain degree. If you're in a situation where it's unhealthy, um, it's, you know, extremely negative or toxic might even be a better word. Um, and it doesn't even have to be that extreme to just have a clear boundary should be, you want your boundary to bring you peace, Right. And, and I mean peace, not so much from the standpoint, again, back to this, the comfort, you know, side of this is out or race said, so, you know, there's so many layers, but peace that, you know, you've set your boundary, you've set your expectation for yourself, for others, and it's okay. This is where I'm going to operate. This is where I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do what I need to do for me to grow, for me to thrive, for me to take care of what I need to take care of personally and professionally. And, 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 and they, again, it ties back into the expectations. You want your expectations to be way out of line because then your boundary is going to be way out of line and you're going to, you're going to may suffer from anxiety. You know, like I said, I, I talked extensively the past couple of days on mental health and it was the stories again were incredible and, and not going to get into all that, but, it's like if we just set a boundary, if you could set that boundary right here, you may not be experiencing some of these feelings, the stress, the emotion. And you may it may be on the flip side. You may be at peace, you may be relaxed, maybe full maybe feeling filled, right, from this meal that we're having. So I'll uh, I'll pause there and, and 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 pass the mic. Hey stuff. <clears throat> Again, I, I love this discussion because I think it's so important to really have a good grasp on this concept because it can really have a major impact on your life. So I think it's so important. Um, one of the things that got triggered for me and Alvin was talking about, you know, hey, where did your boundaries come from, right? That's one of the things that we have to look at. I think Ray said that as well. And what it made me think about is the Wright brothers, you know, and they were the first to get off the ground with flight. Right? And at that time in human history, scientists believe that human beings couldn't travel more than 30 miles per hour. Believed it. That was a boundary, right? That was a barrier. Humans cannot travel more than 30 miles per hour. Uh, you're, you'll, you'll go insane. You'll, you'll go blind, you'll explode. I mean, all of these things. So people believe that. So when the Wright brothers <laughs> decide that they're going to go after flight, that was not celebrated. <laughs> people were not lined up. Oh, you guys are awesome. Hey, let's go. Their dad, you know, was a 
was a very traditional, had some very traditional Christian thoughts, and he thought it was, you know, uh, blasphemous for man to think that they could fly, and it was against God. Even those are those are serious boundaries that they were challenging. Now we laugh about it today, right? Because those boundaries were proved false. But they're real when we set them up, and especially when they come from authority figures. Hey, that's a pastor said this. Hey, scientists said this, right? And so that's one of the keys in, in our lifetime is not allowing other people's beliefs because they might not be founded in fact to influence our boundaries in a way that's going to limit our personal professional growth and as human beings we do it all the time right we do it all the time we see that authority to someone else that has a degree right or has some supposed expertise or is representing that they know and it's a real dangerous thing so Anyhow, I thought that was fascinating to me because i that's something that I learned maybe uh, last year was I never knew that scientists said, well, you can't go more than 30 miles per hour. And uh, so even motor vehicles, right? And the aircraft, you know, like when uh, they were trying to get the horseless carriage going, well, that thing can't better not go faster than 30. You know, it's just all these things. So it's it's fascinating as human beings what we'll allow ourselves to believe because an authority figure said so. So at times when we, a boundary is challenged, one of the things we can do as humans is to your point, look and say, where did that boundary come from? And, you know, and allow thought to come around that. And that is freedom, right? I mean, imagine if you weren't willing to get on an aircraft. I mean, your life, you, you would still live, but, Things would take a lot longer for you, you know. You didn't, or you didn't take a motor vehicle any, anywhere. You know, things would be a lot. Your, your travel would be a lot different than it is today, and your 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 stretch and your scope would be a lot different. So that was a that was an interesting uh, fact I wanted to share. With that, I'll pass the mic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... I think about this too. I found this wisdom I want to share with you guys. I, I think it's super um, cool with this conversation. It says, uh, don't let your boundaries become walls that keep everything out. Boundaries teach people where the door is. Where the door is. And that's the danger sometimes. Um, if we don't know where the boundaries come from, if we're not clear about our values, if we're not clear about ourselves, what happens is just out of reaction, everything that comes towards us seems like a threat sometimes. And the reaction is simply keep everything up so I can remain safe, okay? So I can remain safe. Let's not try to fly because, you know, we can't go over 30 miles an hour. We'll explode. We'll this, we'll, we'll that, <laughs> you know. Um, I believe last week or the week after that, we talked about um, disturbance, okay? Disturbance. And, man, I, I, I focus on this word because it's such a powerful word. Sometimes the status quo needs to be disturb you know as simple as that it is it is a law of nature when you go to, ch to the gym and you work out what happens you know your muscles break down so they can build back up they go through this phase of being disturbed they were comfortable and now they're <laughs> they're being worked on they're being challenged doesn't feel good and what happens you become stronger right so let's look at that okay when we think of boundaries when we think of this wall and when we think of this door in the end i say if something is strong enough okay if something is really strong enough let it be disturbed let it be challenged and if it is what it says it is it will stand it will stand and you know okay 
I'm keeping this here. This is stop. Uh, this is solid. This is what I truly need to protect me. This is what I truly need to love myself and to project. Okay, um, that love them to others, saying, "Hey, in this relationship, uh, we're gonna do A, B, C." Okay, it's strong enough. But again, if you allow for things to be challenged, if you allow for things to be disturbed, you get to see what's weak and you get to see what needs to be broken down and rebuilt, okay, and rebuilt. And this is where you leave that door. You know, this is where you leave that door. So, yeah, should be strong enough to hold things back, but malleable enough, um, aware enough to open up the door for what do needs to come in, okay? So, and this applies, again, we talk about this one subject, right? Boundaries, expectations, but it really applies to anything else in our lives. You know, if you're in a in a marriage, if you're if you're a parent, if you have a if you have a business, every single day, okay, every single day you're being challenged by the market. <laughs> Maybe you're being challenged by your clients, by your system, and you need to assess, okay, what's strong enough that we keep and we keep moving forward with that. What needs to be teared down and rebuilt and optimized so that we can move forward um, also. So I'll pass the mic and I'll leave it with this. All right. All right. A lot of great uh, conversations here. Let me uh, go to my notes. I don't even know where to start with them because I threw them down. Okay. So I'm going to sit start here. Ray touched on a little bit of what I have here. He says, if you're bound, well, this is what I wrote. If your boundaries are strong enough, here's the flip side of it. <clears throat> if your boundaries are strong and uh, reinforced by your values, and if they are in alignment with you, here's what it does. It will help others who are around you reinforce their own values. Because when you let your own light shine, this is from my favorite poem with Marianne Williamson. When we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. So I remember a movie, The Legend of Bagger Vance. And that movie was about golfing. And so Bagger Vance was a great golfer at one point. And he, I think it's alcohol, if I remember correctly, he got into substance and got off his game and kind of gave up the game. But he was always a legend in this town. But if I remember correctly, there was a big game and there was a the typical villain in the town and they had this big game of a playoff game and it was worth a lot of a lot of things to the town, I think. So the main point though is at the end of the game, at the end of the, sh the movie, they played this golf game that went into nighttime and they couldn't see. There was no lights. It was back in the day. And so everybody kind of shone their car lights to allow them to see. So Bagger Vance had this young young boy with him who was his caddy. He loved him. He loved Bagger Vance and he was his hero. So Bagger Vance ended up in a grassy area and he couldn't see and no one else was there but him and the boy. And the boy says, he, he was a tough shot. And the boy says, Bagger, why don't you pick it up kind of thing, you know? No, 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 pick it up. And they put in a better lie so he could have a better shot because this would win the game. And Bagger says, no, I'm not picking it up. I'm going to shoot it from here. He goes, but Bagger, you might lose, you know. There's a lot riding on it. And he says, no, 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 Bagger, no, 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 I won't tell. And he goes, I will know. I will know. See, so Bagger didn't pick up. He shot it from the spot. Regardless, win or lose, he shot it from that spot. See, that's the values piece. No, no, no. The kid said, I won't tell. But he said, you may not tell, but I will know. And, and I, you know, the, what that did for the kid was, you could tell in the movie that it, it reinforced the kid about values, how important values are. So when we respect our boundaries, we're also telling the people around us, Maybe they have weak boundaries. All of a sudden, they see someone with integrity and boundaries and values, and they go, that's what it looks like. Because maybe they've never seen 
values. They've never seen someone upheld and uphold their boundaries and their values. They've never seen it. They've seen people cave in. Maybe they're in a, I'm thinking now what comes to mind is a corporate situation where everybody has said to the boss, yeah, boss, that's, I'll stay late. I will do this. I will do that. And never call the boss out. All the boss has around him is yes, people. Yes, yes, you did right. Yes, you're good. Yes, that decision's bright. Yes, I'll stay late. Yes, uh, oh, I have my birthday with my kids, but I'll stay, sir, you know, or ma'am. And they stay because of that lack of boundaries. Seeing that boss now lost all respect for them and just continues to abuse them uh, because they're like, oh, they didn't know it was a game being played. So, you know, what? what is it? Like, what? where does that line get drawn, right? So when we respect our boundaries, we're also giving other people, people permission to do the same around us. And then I go, I go here, the biggest, but here's the thing, time management is a big white elephant when it comes to boundaries, time management. Hey, can you make this? Can you do this? Can you help me move? Can you help me do this? Can you help me do this? And you have... You're exhausted. You've given up all your time and so on and so on. This is something that's actually become really, really valuable to me as I get older is time management, saying no. Uh, you know, as as Brandon brought back Dr. Charlie's wisdom that he brought to us last week from Beyonce, there's a lot of good in goodbye. There's also a lot of power in no. There's a lot of love in no. Because then I don't show up and I'm resentful against you because I said yes, and I didn't want to. So um, there's a lot of great things in saying no, no to time, you know, let's manage our time. Because time is the, is a resource that we don't have. We don't have, a, you know, unlimited amounts. So, but here's the thing. I've been around people who are so rigid on time that did cost them. So I wrote here, how can we make it a win-win? How can we make it a win-win so we can elevate? Because, you know, if you're with us, sometimes you are needed to, you are needed to help out. It can't be always, no, I'm done at 5 p.m. There are times. I'm not going to say that we just rigidly walk away from the job and, and, and helping others. No, I'm saying, though, no, but if we, respect our boundaries and know what they are and our values, we can say, let's make it a win-win. I will have to go to my son's birthday party, my daughter's recital. However, how about I come, when I get home, I do a couple hours on this project just to move us forward, work from home. See, so we, can we find a win-win? So again, it's it's a team play. It's a team play. You get to respect, because I've been to many, my kids are older now, I've been to a large percent, I'm not going to say all, because there might be some I miss, but not to my memory. I've been to all, respecting my family values, I've been to all events that my kids were doing, most if not all, because I remembered what my values are, I respected them, and I made it a win-win. I rescheduled my clients to work. Maybe I'll go in on a Saturday when I wasn't supposed to go in on a Saturday. But it's a win-win, because I respected my values, my boundaries over here, but then I went on over here. So for those listening, yes, that promotion is necessary sometimes to move up that ladder. But how can you make it a win-win? So we're not sitting here telling you we're living in fantasy world saying you say no to everything because it doesn't end at 5 p.m. Or it doesn't end at 4 p.m. No, let's make it a win-win. So I would say then, yeah, boundaries, there's very important conversation. And it's totally in alignment. Thanks for bringing this meal, Brandon. It's totally in alignment with this idea of mastery, personal mastery. Is <clears throat> once I figured out who I am, establish it, put my stake in the ground. I actually brought this up this week. I can't though be like the oak or the stiff tree in a wind, because life is the wind, right? Life is a wind that blows and it can blow in any direction. It can blow at any speed. It can go fast one day, heavy one day and not. If you're like the willow tree that bends to the wind, you can survive. 
But if you're a rigid, that you will snap. You will snap. Boundaries has to be that way. So um, check that out. Think about that. I'm going to pass that on. Pass the meal on. There we go. All, all great stuff. Uh, never disappoints these early morning meetings. I love it. Uh, you know, Al, you said something about no. Um, and I say this quite often. I'm always striving to be better at practicing and putting it into play. But no is a full sentence. No is a full sentence. <laughs> and we don't, so many of us don't. Amen. Say it enough, Amen. you know, and it was a conversation again that kept coming up this week, and um, just as 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 early as just just yesterday, um, and I heard a lot of stories, a lot of conversations around, a lot of sharing around the overarching premise of it was somebody wants something from someone else, typically a supervisor, a leader, someone influential in their life or a loved one or family member, husband, wife, you know, doesn't matter. Significant other. And rather than going to them and asking and taking action, it's, they just sit around and wait quietly in their own despair, their own frustration, their own anxiety disappointment waiting for them well if they would just do this but well, why don't you ask have you had that conversation have you set that boundary have you set that expectation they may not even know what you're what you're desiring they may not even know what you need to be successful or to feel loved or appreciated or cared for um, or to help you grow right and evolve and, and you're just sitting here on your hands well, I can't do that. I hear that. I hear heard that quite a bit. Or it's not my job. It's not my place. And it's like you, but you're just completely assuming an individual. You know, again, everything that we've talked about. What what their about? What are their values? Do you know what their values are? What what was their, you know, experience from birth that shaped them into who they are? And you're just assuming that because you have this need, want, or desire that they just should automatically be able to read your mind. And again, it's that expectation of ourselves, of others. Um, we're trying to combat here, right? We're trying to solve that magic, that magic answer. This is, this is the recipe. This is the in ingredients that's going to fix this, right? Um, and it's, it's one I think we'll continue to strive for but, and look for. But I believe it's a combination. It's a combination of all of them. And coming together and, and just, I don't think anything's ever going to be perfect in this world until we get to where we all, some of us believe we're going to. And But until then, we have to be honest with ourselves, honest with others, and have enough courage, respect, to set that boundary, have a realistic expectation, and to communicate it in, in some kind of taking that action. And we're just sitting around waiting for someone else to do it for me. So with that, I'll pass the mic. Setting expectations. That's the other side of this coin we we're talking about today. And this is another important one, I think, that I, I had to learn this lesson, of course. And setting expectations is important because if we set expectations of people that are they're not even capable of meeting those expectations, then we're doomed to always be disappointed. And is it an error with this person that they're not capable of X? No, it could be like Brandon said, their background, what they've had ingrained in them, all their experiences have brought them to this and they're not capable of seeing something over here or responding to us in a way that we would prefer right so that is a that is a big one and just being able to look at people and give them grace because as brandon mentioned we don't know their background we don't know their history we don't know all the things that have shaped 
went into shaping who they are and to set an unrealistic ex put to put an unrealistic expectation on another human being is not fair to 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 them and then we're going to be doomed to be disappointed in that so we really got to be careful about setting expectations on people and then here's another big one <laughs> i've been guilty of this you know, setting expectations for people and then not letting them know what they are, <laughs> right? <laughs> not yeah. letting them know what they are. So they're like, well, man, yeah. we've been nice. That's really important to you. Then then waiting until there's a boiling point. Oh, well, this is so important to me. And then it's like, hey, Charlie, it would have been nice to know that it was important mm -hmm. to you because then I could, you know, <laughs> like moving forward, I could, I can, you know, I can, I can do better, but I didn't know anything about it. Right. It wasn't even on my radar. And well, it should be on your well, why should it be on their radar? There's no there's none of that. So that communication, setting expectations is so important. You think about relationships, personal relationships, setting expectations, intimate relationships, so important to have ex, you know, setting those expectations. Both parties know it professionally, you know, as a we want to meet and exceed. You know, people that hire us to speak or hire us to do things, we want to meet and ex exceed their expectations. But in order to do that, we need to have a complete understanding of what their expectations are. Okay. Because if we don't meet those expectations, we didn't know they're, they'll never hire us again, right? For, for whatever it is. And so it's so important to, you know, have that clear understanding and dialogue. And again, that's taking the time to do those things then we set ourselves up you know for a successful future and with that i'll pass the mic i think it was alvin uh, that was talking about when we respect our boundaries we help others uh other people do the same i want to give you guys some funny um uh, examples okay uh, one that happened this week one that happened a few uh weeks back so i was with a colleague uh, this week we were going to to a meeting to see a client and um we're in my car okay we're just shopping it up talking about to come out and some uh, good looking ladies I, I suppose they they walk on the street you know besides us and then he looks at me and he's like and he's like how do you do it Raymond I'm like what what do you mean how do I do it he's like how do you do it every time I'm with you you don't look at other women. How do you do it? You know? And I'm like, listen, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm just kind of <laughs> going about my day, doing my things. And, but he's, he's serious. He's like, I'm observing you every time we're together. And there's ladies that walk on the street and you don't turn around. You don't look at them, whatever. I'm like, hey, I don't know. It's just something that's part of my values. I don't know. I've been with my with my wife, uh, girlfriend for 20 years, you know, for 20 years. And it's one of the ways I keep myself out of situations. I just don't even try to get into those situations, you know? So I don't know, it became automatic, but you know what he told me every time I'm with you, I always think about that. And I intentionally try to do that also because I always see you do it. So I'm like, how do you, how do you do it? You know? So naturally just by being around me is uh interactions is is actions change literally you know and it, it makes them think about something he's never thought about before as for me i don't even think about it mm -hmm. so that's one example i'll give you another funny one back then when i played uh football i had a coach that really uh helped me out he used to challenge me he's the type of Rah rah coach that gets into your face, he yells at uh, every second uh, that he can. Okay, but we made a mistake on the offense, and he just started going crazy. Okay, and I mean the the way I was raised is I always respect coaches. You can yell at me all you want. I'll do what you need me to do. But we are both adults. Don't think for a second you can touch me, <laughs> okay? Like, uh, there's that, that boundary is very clear, you know? So he started going crazy. He's super red. He turns around right in my face, okay, in front of everyone. 
and he raises his hands up, okay? He raises his hand up. And just the way I looked at him, you know, he understood at that moment, he needed to make a very, very informed decision. <laughs> hey, don't even think about going through with this. You will not like the other side. So he turned around and slapped one of my teammates. <laughs> so he turned around, slapped one of my teammates, you know? So again, that shows you exactly what you allow. Like in that one second, he knew that I'll always be respectful. Okay, I'll always be respectful. But that boundary was very clear. Do not even think about touching. Okay. While for my teammate, that boundary wasn't clear. So whatever <laughs> you allow, that's what happens. He slapped my teammate in the face. So every time we, we see each other to this day, we always laugh about that because he turned at me first. <laughs> okay, he turned at me first <laughs> and turned around, slapped the other guy. Okay, so it's a, it's just a, a, a clear uh, example. Now I want to go back uh, to what Charlie and Brandon were talking about, the power of no. Man, that's such a good one. That's such a good one. That every single day, man, uh, that's, that's one thing I always continually try to get better at. But I'll dive deeper. I'll say, um, you know, we have these expectations for others, for ourselves. And uh, maybe because of ego, we wait, okay? Uh, we say, man, we want them to do this, and then they don't do it, and we get mad. We wait. And I'll, I'll say initiating is always uh, the key. I find whenever we initiate, instead of waiting, that's really when good things happen, okay? And initiating, what is that? It's just the process of getting something to begin, Waiting is a is an amazing thing. When we think of uh, compound interest, for instance, okay, you put something somewhere and over time it grows, right? So you have to wait. But before you can reap the rewards of that, you still need to initiate. You still need to put your money somewhere. You still need to act. I believe it's the same thing when it comes to our boundaries, our expectations uh, in our relationships, in our lives. Man, um, you get rewarded when you first initiate something, okay? When you first initiate something. In class, if you're stressed out about speaking, you're the first one to speak. It's out of the way. <laughs> you know, you initiate something. So uh, when we put these two on the pendulum, I truly believe if we focus more of our attention on initiating more often than not, good things happen, okay? And we get the resource that, that we want ultimately. Instead of waiting, being in our feelings, getting mad, or feeling like we need some type of permission, you know, to do something. When really, that's one thing I find. The more we speak together, the more we grow into life, I realize you don't need no one's permission. Yeah. If something's truly important to you, if you truly want it, if you go about it the right way, why would you wait? Yeah. Why would you wait? You can simply do one step, initiate something. Good things uh, will happen. And with that, I'll pass the mic. Yeah. One thing, if I can can add, it just you triggered some funny memories to me with, with the football <laughs> and coaches getting in your face and getting physical. Yeah, and, uh, and a lot of, nowadays, I think a lot of people don't know the history in that and how coaches would get get physical with it back in back in the day. You know, grab you by the face mask and jerk you around, you know, or hit you. So I was like Pee Wee football. So it was Pop Warner here in the United States. So we're talking uh, sixth, sixth grade, fifth grade, sixth. You start playing back then. You could start playing contact football in fifth grade. We had a coach that was he was like a karate guy, you know. And there was a karate school in town, and he was like a black belt. So back then, you know, you, you know, like Xeroxing, cop making copies. It was new technology. We're talking 1970s now. So this is newer technology. It's expensive. So they didn't hand out playbooks to, to little kids. You know, you, they would tell you the play, and you just had to remember it. And so he would, they would go through the play, and 
you know, and I'm standing there watching and then, you know, a car drives by, <laughs> start watching the car, you know, a bird goes by <laughs> and I start watching, hey, uh, car right, you know, what do you do on 228 quick? I don't know. And so he would, boom, he would punch you like right in the chest and you know, you're like, you were a kid, you just drop, take a lap, you know, and then uh, come back, you know, and show you the play again. I'm watch another car. Car right, what do you do on 220 quick? I don't know. Spinning back kick kicks me right in the head. Bam. Wow. Bam. Yeah, and the parents are standing on the sideline going, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's different how time. different, different time. it is. The parents are right there going, oh, that's wow. right. You know, these kids need to learn to pay attention. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so we we we've evolved as a society, and and you and you wonder why your attention and focus wasn't there. You're getting kicked yeah. in the head. Yeah, you're getting kicked in the head. You know what I mean? I just don't remember. I don't know. I can't remember this play. Wow. You know, well, elbow. Yeah, I mean, so it's just so funny. I had to share that. It just because nowadays, I mean, the guy would you know the police would come right, you know, and take him away, yeah. assaulting. <laughs> but that was well, just the. Part of the game, part of the process, part of the rite of passage, right? Mm. There's there's a there's a video I just watched. I've seen it a few times. It's Marshawn Lynch mm. as a coach. And it's a YouTube video, and he's coaching a little league or a football league. He's team. going at them. He's going at yeah. them hard. Yeah. Yeah, he's going at the kids hard. And these mothers are freaking out because the way he's talking to them. And and he's like, is there? And he kept asking the question, is there a man here today with you? Is there a man in your life? You know, and they were getting upset. Like that has nothing to do with it. And he's just explaining, like when there's there's consequences. I have expectations. There's consequences if they don't meet those. You know, if they don't follow this rule or do what they're supposed to do for every action and reaction. There's a reaction, right? Yeah. And it's just interesting, even thinking about you know what you were saying, Charlie, and your your experience. I've I've had similar and. It is so different, but those we may see that as abuse today, and it was abuse then in some aspects, right? <laughs> but there, there's also there, there was also a, a component to it where I look at it. There's a, there's a certain level of necessity, right, for some of that abrasiveness or so, or some of that force, you know, in in the right in the right mindset when it's coming from a loving place and grace. And I wanted to share on grace really quick and then I'll, I'll pass the mic, but multiple times through these discussions that I have with folks in, in this past week, and even before, prior to that individuals talk about, you know, this person, this man, this woman, you know, regard, they, you know, this is what they're doing. And if they would just do this, and again, it goes back to like, Ray said what I what I mentioned about initiating or taking action and saying, well, do you talk to them? But what's left out of the equation I see more often than not is, is grace. Taking a step back and looking and truly looking at who you're talking to, who you're dealing with. You know, I, I, there was a lady the other day, old enough, well old enough to be my mother, if not even older than that, pushing, you know, a young, a younger grandmother potentially, uh, and she was complaining, she was talking about her boss and, and he was old, he was older than her. And it's like, but do you, did you, have you taken into consideration again, his values, his beliefs, his experience, his upbringing generationally, we are all going to be, those things are all going to impact us, how we act, how we communicate, how we set boundaries and ex, how we set expectations and communicate them. Or maybe we don't. And it's just an assumption. And I think that, you know, one of the one of the really key ingredients to having boundaries and expectations is making sure we also have grace for that those other folks to a certain level. Right. I'm not saying give them a free ride or just, you know, carte blanche to just be able to walk all over us, right? And trample us. But we have to understand where they're coming from. Maybe no one said boundaries for them so they don't see that as important or or knew how to communicate expectations it was just an assumption and that has to play a role in the conversations and with that i'll pass the mic i'll just like to add something real real quick because um i think of 
a lot of um, adults, okay? A lot of adults who are still on the negative end, okay, on the negative end of a lot of these, you know, situations, okay? Charlie talked about what happened, but he was a child, right? He was a child. Me too. I, as a child, I probably would have get slapped in, slapped in the face. I wasn't a child anymore, right? I wasn't a child anymore. But I'm sure all of you have been in these situations or talked to these people where for some reason, okay, some people are always getting picked on. It's always that, you know? Why is that? Why is that? You know, whenever you're you're in the workplace or, or part of a team and someone maybe abuses of their power or doesn't go about it the same way, they seem to pick and choose who they do it with. They don't do it to certain people. Why is that? Okay. So that's why boundaries are so important. Okay. That's why boundaries are so important. Um, and any adult who's listening to this to this call right now and who's in that situation um i'm just saying that we're with you okay we're with you um maybe the first thing we talked about is is initiating uh know you are know you are know what your your biggest strongest values are and um giving yourself you know giving yourself the opportunity and the chance to simply stand tall on these things, you know, because um, we all live together, we all work together, and I believe we all share energy, okay? Sometimes we don't have to speak words. Uh, certain people feel what you're going to allow for them to do you, to you, you know? And uh, they see also what you're not going to permit. So I'll just say, um, stand on that. Stand on that. You deserve the best. And... Uh, yeah, boundaries and uh, expectations. That's why they're so important. So I just wanted to uh, leave that also. All right. All right. I want to throw some in. First of all, very, very funny. Those uh, those reminiscing times. We've all had some of those gut check moments where your boundaries are. Your coach has tested them. And I wanted to go to, I, I forgot to touch it on Ray's wisdom that he shared. Don't let your boundaries, and I'm gonna, I may have not gotten all the words here, but it says, don't let your boundaries become walls that keep everything out. Your boundaries will teach people where your where the door is or your door is. And I'm gonna flip that too and say, your your boundaries, don't let the walls, same thing, don't let your boundaries become walls and keep everything out. Your boundaries also teach you where the door is. So you can get out of your own wall that you created. So it's a flip. Not only will it teach others where your door is so they can get in, into your inner circle, but it'll teach you where your door is, where you can get out of your own jail that you created mm -hmm. for yourself. Right? So I thought it was powerful. It can be done both ways. And then the, the last part I'd like to add to this meal when I was thinking about what I was talking about with uh, your employees and your boss calling you and 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 it's 5 p.m. and you're going over and they almost expect you, expectation that you will, for the position, you will stay in there. And as a leader, <clears throat> it's nice to know your client, your people's boundaries as well. Why? One, you can respect it when you really get to know your people. And this is something that I put a lot of, I put a lot of emphasis on this, getting to know people around me. I think it's because of respect, actually, for when I think that I'm talking about it. I think it's because of one of my values, respect. In order to respect you, I have to know what your boundaries are and respect that, then I will respect you and show you. And, and I tell you, I'm just thinking of one person now that her mom listens to this and she listens to this podcast. You know, she will go to the end of the earth. She will, she's in my assistant, but she will do, you know, go over and above the call of duty. 
and I do my best to respect that she will do that and not disrespect it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll say, go home. I don't need you anymore. Oh, I can stay. No, go home. Insist that she goes home. So, because I know if I say she can, she'll stay till midnight. No, go home. Right? And that builds even more connection to you and more uh, integrity and more respect for you. So if you know someone is prone to saying yes all the time, you be the one that says no to them. Because intuitively we know, right? We know our people. We should know our people. And know where their values in their life. If I know, for instance, Charlie has got a high integrity, for instance. And and commitment to somebody. When he says yes, he's 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 in there. He's in the so knowing that I won't then abuse it. Oh, I know he's committed. I'll, I'll just ask him for little extras that because I know he'll do it. Right? No, I would go, no. Here's a healthy boundary. <clears throat> I'll ask you to do something with me for me, but to a limit, to where be, before your limit. I know you'll stay till midnight. I know if I call you on a Sunday, you would drop things to help me move. But what if I don't ask you and you find out that I was moving, you'd be, hey, man, next time call me. Absolutely. You know, but you'll now respect me. Every time I call, you will answer my call. Because you know I won't abuse your boundaries. You know I, I care for them. So I hope that's getting across where as a leader, those who are those who are leaders in their company or wherever, even your children, leaders somewhere, if you find out their boundaries, just stay right. Sometimes it's okay to push the push a little bit just to say. Because they actually want to help you. But when you abuse it, it goes over the line. There's a fine line where you're making them stay too late or you're just, just taking more than necessary. And and that's where you got to respect that. So it's an interesting one. Uh, so that's what I want to add is the boundaries conversation can go all over the place. But you can actually use it as an asset, as a leader, to, to really you know, um, lock your people in to your, to the culture. And if you're, if you're, and also culture, <laughs> uh, there's a whole lot of conversation, but be careful what you put up as your mission statement and your values on your wall, because you got to respect that because then that becomes, that can actually go against you. If you have up a, a loving integrity company with that bill, blah, blah, blah. I've seen so many people, for instance, big companies, that people work for and tell me there's nothing like that on that. What they wrote on that wall is nothing close. See, it can be a double-edged sword. So anyways, with that, I will pass that mic on. The final uh, spice rack, I'll pass it on. What do you guys think about this when it comes to, um, when it comes <clears throat> to children, for instance, chil children's boundaries? Um, there's an NFL player, his name is Amon Ra St. Brown. He's one of the highest paid guys at his position now, okay? But he's famous for having a very hard father. His father was, I believe, two-time uh, Mr. Uh, Universe or something like that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah, and as his father was talking to another younger athlete and his father they asked they asked him what do i do to make it to the nfl for instance and the father mm -hmm. of amin Ra basically told the kid yeah you need to work hard you need to do this you need to do that and then he turned around and looked that eye in the father's eyes basically and told the father um it's really not up up to him to your son it's up to you because he won't want to wake up. He won't want to train. That's what kids do. He won't want to go to the gym. And it's up to you to push him to do all these things that he doesn't want to do. And that's what will get him 
to the next level. So it's really not up to the kid. It's up to the father. That's his mindset. And I believe, again, it, it, it's okay to <clears throat> push kids. I find, man, we're, we're all different. Huh? We're all different. We have our own journey to play. And there's such a fine line there. You know, it's not because maybe it worked with his son that it will work 100% of the time with somebody else. So, again, I, I just found it was an interesting perspective. There's a lot of truth in that. I just find I look at I look at my son who my oldest guy who's he's six kind of turning on sixteen in his mind sometimes when he when we give a little bit too much leeway then he starts to kind of flex his muscle and look at you so we're dealing with that and we're figuring it out my wife and I while wow, he's growing he's not the same kid he was last year uh, we need to adjust we need to to evolve also so. Anyways, it's just interesting. You always want to be the best version of yourself for your kids. But I just thought that was that was an interesting take for sure. Saying so, it's not on the kid is hundred percent on the dad, you know. Before uh, before Brandon jumps in here and <laughs> takes it. And we don't we, you know, we're getting close to the end of this conversation. We are, so this, we this, are. Is, this is a whole other conversation. But here's what I would yes. say real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> summarize this real quick. When he turned to that father could be the mother too when he when he turns to that parent and said that he has to stop and think though one step i know who you're talking about actually i just watched a special on him called receiver i think it is mm. um but he has to be careful this is uh this father was a he didn't quite make olympia but he was a bodybuilder competitive bodybuilder and to the day when his son was growing up he'd watch his father lift and compete and have that mindset so when when his father turned to that parent and said you have to be you have to push them i would edit that a little bit and said you have to grow for your son to grow because you know if dad's coming home sitting on that couch drinking a beer every day and and doing nothing it's very hard to go tell your son to go push son Push, you got to get out to the park. Give me a second. Let me grab my two four. Okay, I'll grab a two four. And I'm gonna be in the. I'm gonna be in the car while you're pushing. No, mm -hmm. dad has to be. That's why you probably see that there'll be a tougher grind. See, for you, Ray, it's not gonna be a difficult thing because I would say you show up and your son sees you. They see what you do, not what you talk about. So that'd be my only edit on that conversation. Is when he turned, he has to. Turned to the dad and said, are you participating in your son's greatness? You know, because you have to be part of that. You have to do it first, man. No one's going to listen to a lot of lip service. The kid will look at you and go, dad, I'm going to poke you, your boundaries. Anyways, that's what I would add to that. Pass that. Oh, there's a lot here. Ray is going to go and drop that right at the end. <laughs> right? Right. Exactly. He brings, he brings I know, extra I look at my watch. out of the car. Yeah, I look at my watch, you know, at... at 6:45, thinking, oh, yeah. we got all kind. Now I'm looking at it. It's like, wait, we got eight minutes. <laughs> hey, you know, two things, Charlie. You talked about growth earlier, and I didn't touch on this, but you know how people evolve and they grow and they change over time. And I read, I was listening to something recently that about every five to six years, people are different than what they were at the beginning at, at year one. You know, and then year six, you're a different person, and year twelve, you know, kind of thing, and and kind of in, in that range, and. and they were specifically talking about relationships and marriages. And I found that to be very interesting. And I would say I'm experiencing that right now um, myself personally, but what really brought all this on was, was the not just professionally experience of late or of recent, but personally, my son, my youngest son and I are going through this right now. And it's uh, it's caused some distance quite a bit you know because there's a boundary that i have and it and i know where the door is he knows where the door is but um it's been a great conversation i i appreciate you guys and, and ray to your your point and i agree with al 100 percent that it, you can't as a father do it for them you're not going to make them quote unquote do anything can you support can you be compassionate loving can you be disciplined? Can you provide guidance, direction? Yes. But at the end of the day, that child or that, you know, regardless of age, that other person 
they're going to have to take that step first step, right? You can encourage all along. You can show them the benefits, you know, but some boundaries do have a cost. Some boundaries do have a cost. And sometimes it's a, it's not a lot. And sometimes it is a lot. It can be expensive in the grand scheme of things. So with that, I'll pass the mic. I know Charlie's always got something beautiful to say. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, this has been such a great conversation and, and, and every time I come on the call, call I always learn, you know, I've got, I've got uh, plenty of notes here uh, that I, that I took and took some really great things to heart. So I think that in all of it, you know, just to having a, having an awareness about, you know, our, our boundaries, having an awareness about our expectations and having a having a balanced approach to it we're going to get the best results you know as, as human beings and the one of the things you touched on towards the end there brandon was grace and i think that's so important and i make mistakes we all, we all make mistakes and so we all need grace at times and it feels good to get to, to get it receive it when we need it and it also is nice to to give it. And so that combination, you know, of setting boundaries, expectations, and, and in all of it, giving people grace, I think we set ourselves up for our best life, for our best, our best experience in life. So with that I'll pass it back to the mm-hmm. to the personal mastery master. <laughs> all right my friends all right my friends thank you my 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 belly full my belly's mm-hmm. full all right i want to thank you guys for nourishing me because and then you know the beauty as i'm always saying the beauty is this is the kind of food that when we it goes on and on we we go back and as brandon said he took your wisdom there's some good and goodbye and he passed that on to others so this is the beauty of it is that we get to pass this on and I will be passing this on all week and it'll be passed on to all our listeners. And so amazing, amazing. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate your, the listeners for liking, subscribing and sharing, uh, making this meal even better. So remember, I'm going to leave you again with what my, our mentor, Dr. Tom Hill would always say, I'm always going to honor him. 89, he's 10, 39 next month. He always used to tell me one idea well executed can change your life forever. So when you listen to this podcast, you're not looking for 20, 30 ideas before you move. You're looking for one that hits your soul and that you'll move on. And that will change your game forever. It might be the one you need. So with that, we're going to leave with our last word of the the day of the week that we're going to take through to the week. And then we're going to give you a little, soulful goodbye so my word my word my word my word my word is i'm gonna say four words build bridges not walls i'm gonna go with grace give grace to others and give grace to myself yeah i'll I'll, I'll go yeah I'm, i'm with charlie it's uh i you know during this i always words pop up and I circle them and they keep circling. Grace, grace is definitely my word for sure. And uh, uh, I'll steal it a third time around. You know, grace. Yeah. <laughs> grace, right. that's the word. Grace is the main ingredient today, everybody. Grace is yeah. the main ingredient. All right, with that, we are going to wish you a little bit of peace. Yeah, peace. A whole lot of love. 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 And just a sprinkler of soul. soul. All right. All right, everybody. Until next time, we appreciate you. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and we'll be back with some Alliance wisdom next time. All right. Appreciate Proud. you guys. Take it easy. Awesome. Bye-bye. Awesome.